Hi everybody, and welcome back to the workbench. Today we're going to be doing a pretty cool project. I'm going to be taking my base, a kind of old cheap wash burn, I've done a couple of mods to throughout the years, and we're going to be adding to it, and we're going to be adding an oscillator to it. So what that means in simple terms is basically we're going to have an extra onboard synth on the base. So the plan is to put the oscillator in the body of the base here, uh, and basically make it toggleable so I can just turn it on and off during playing and get a really cool extra square bass sound going in addition to my normal bass playing. Um, I don't know how it's gonna so sound, I don't know how it's gonna work, but hey, let's find out. I decided to base the circuit on a 555 IC, which is a timer IC that can be used in a variety of timer, delay, pulse generation and oscillator applications. It can, put, for example, be set up as an A-stable multivibrator, which, in theory, would create an excellent square wave oscillator. I found this nice tutorial on electronics tutorials about setting up a 555 A-stable oscillator. More specifically, I used this circuit which details how to set up an oscillator with a fixed 50% duty cycle square wave oscillator that allows you to easily vary the frequency of the square wave with only a single resistor thus making it easy to use a single potentiometer to change the frequency. After that, I got to work assembling the circuit on a breadboard and then populating the board with the necessary components. The circuit was fairly simple, calling for only two resistors and two capacitors, so it didn't take long to set up. After that, I connected the circuit to a quarter inch jack cable and then inserted leads for a 9 volt battery. After that, I was ready for testing, so I plugged in a battery and turned on my bench speaker, but the circuit didn't make any sound. I really couldn't figure out what the problem was. The circuit was correctly set up, but the chip just didn't oscillate. In retrospect, I should have tried a different chip in case this one was faulty, but after about an hour of troubleshooting with no luck, I decided to give up on a circuit based on a 555 and instead for a, go for a circuit that I was more familiar with and base it on an IC called the CD40106, which is a hex inverter circuit that I've used before and is one of the easiest ways to make your own oscillator. There's a few good resources on YouTube that I've turned to when working with the CD40106, Especially I would recommend this video from Synth DIY Guy, in which he details how easy it is to set up the CD40106 as an oscillator. His video is linked in the description. Since the circuit is so easy to set up, it only took me a little while to put it together. Uh, all it really requires is one capacitor and one resistor to make it oscillate. So after it was set up, I simply connected a jack and a potentiometer to control the pitch, and then turn it on. it oscillated. After playing with the circuit for a bit, I had to figure out how to set up the circuit for variable frequency in a way that gave me a usable pitch range for playing in a live setting. Because the frequency of the oscillation is determined by the capacitance of the capacitor in the circuit and the resistance of the resistor, the easiest way to vary the frequency or pitch is by using a potentiometer instead of the resistor, which is what I'm doing here. But ideally for an instrument in a live setting, there would be a certain minimum value for a note, and then a maximum value, a highest and lowest note, so to speak. So my job here was to figure out what resistance values would work well as the lowest and the highest note. So I broke out the multimeter, uh, set up the potentiometer for some good notes, and then measured the resistance between the poles of the potentiometer. After some testing, I decided to set up my circuit so that it would have a base resistor of 20k to achieve the lowest note, and then also have a potentiometer of 20k, a linear potentiometer, which would then give me my so-called note range. So the resistance would go from 20k up to 40k, and it seemed that that gave me about one octave of pitch. After this, I was ready to move the circuit from a breadboard to a strip board which would be a sort of more permanent setup for installation into the instrument. I marked out how big of a board I needed and then cut it down to size. 
I test fitted the IC and then scored all the strips in the board to make sure I didn't short the chip, and then soldered the chip directly to the board itself. I then connected a 9 volt battery lead to the positive and negative terminals of the chip. After which, I added the 1 microfarad film box capacitor which connects the inverter to ground. I added the 20k ohm resistor which would act as a base resistor to dictate our lowest node and later connect to the potentiometer. Before adding the potentiometer though, I had connected a wire which would connect back to the inverter itself in addition to the output and ground wires which would connect to the base. After all that I was ready to add the potentiometer which I made sure to solder directly to the board as this would make it easier to mount into the body of the base. It was then testing time and it worked! I also added a mini toggle switch to make sure I could turn the power on and off. It was now time to mount the oscillator. I unscrewed the plate from the back of the base and got to work. Since there was one free unused hole in my base, I didn't need to drill a new one, but unfortunately my potentiometer was too short to reach through the base, so I ended up having to use a spade drill to thin the wood a bit where the potentiometer would go. After that, I drilled a new hole for the power toggle switch as well. With that done, I loosely fitted and tightened the knobs. Then it was time to connect the output of the oscillator. I could have connected it straight to the output jack, but I wanted to have some control over the volume, so instead I connected it to the volume pot for one of the pickups. I tested it to make sure everything still worked, and then finished the installation by very carefully tightening the pot and the switch and adding a nice black knob to the oscillator. Still work, works as a normal base. And then, if I engage the synth, so pretty cool. I'm fairly happy with the build. Probably some minor tweaks I could do to make it better. Maybe uh, tweak the volume a little bit. The volume control is not totally working as intended. But the real test is of course gonna be how it functions in a live setting. So let's bring it to band practice and see how it works. One thing that became really obvious to me while we were testing it is that I really would have needed to have an easier way to toggle it on and off to make it more playable because it didn't really work with other instruments. Um, in order to do that I probably would have needed a basic momentary toggle switch. So I decided to do that in addition to some other mods that it needed. The three mods that I decided to do were essentially as follows. First to add an LED to show whether the oscillator was on or not. This would prevent me from accidentally leaving it on and wasting my batteries. Secondly, to add a volume control. And thirdly, to add a momentary toggle switch which would allow me to play more easily in rhythm. After opening the base again, I drilled a hole for the power LED. Since I would now have a lot more controls in the same small space, it was important for me to plan the placement well. I put the LED in between the pitch control and the power switch. I picked a small blue LED and drilled out a decently sized hole. I picked a 270 ohm resistor to go with the LED and soldered it to the positive leg of the diode. I then soldered the resistor to the on output of the power switch to make sure it lit up as soon as the oscillator was powered. I then soldered the negative output of the LED to ground. I decided to glue the LED into the body, but the only glue I had on hand was 5 minute epoxy. I mixed it up and then applied a tiny portion to the back of the LED. 
Next I decided it would be a good idea to finish the momentary toggle switch, as placement of that would be pretty important. There wasn't much space to play with, so I ended up placing it below the knack pick of volume. Mode. The hole needed to be really big, so I ran into some problems with the backing plate for my volume knobs, but it worked out okay after a little fiddling. I was then able to plug in the button and test it, which was very satisfying. Before connecting everything, I drilled one more hole for my volume control, which would go in the middle of everything. I used the same method as before, shallowing the wood with a spade drill before installing the potentiometer. After that, it was just a matter of connecting everything together. The oscillator connected to the volume pot, which then went both to ground and to the momentary toggle switch. The momentary toggle switch then connected to the output of the base's main toggle switch. After that, I just installed another black knob for the volume switch and was ready for the final test. So I think we're gonna leave it there for now. Pretty successful build, we managed to do what we set out, which was to create a square wave oscillator to add to my base. Um, it's a thing that's definitely going to have its uses, especially now that I can more easily play it in rhythm. Just what those uses are, are still kind of hard to gauge. I mean, this sort of does require a whole new way of thinking about how you play and thinking about how you write, you know. But I'm pretty happy with the final product and how it turned out, and I'm definitely gonna be happy to learn how to use it more live. Now this has been a pretty great learning experience for me, especially considering that later on I'm planning a similar project, but on, albeit a kind of a grander scale, what I want to do is create a whole instrument made out of these sort of square and or sine wave oscillators, where instead of a normal fretboard, you just have a fretboard of uh, buttons which would toggle certain notes, and then a toggle switch on the body instead of strings to toggle the notes. That's something that's sort of on the long-term scope for me. So um, this was definitely a very useful project to get ready for that. But in any case, I just want to thank you for watching and following along. Please consider liking and subscribing, and I'll catch you next time.